<laughs> Today's guest sells fresh air. <laughs> oh boy, what more can I say? Oh yes, before the marketing madness begins on episode 400 of the Small Business Big Marketing Show, uh, the marketing gold is made possible thanks to the good folk at Prosper and Design Crowd. Now at this point, I would normally read a message about both those wonderful sponsors, but I have received a testimonial from listener Luke in regards to his experience with Prosper. It goes like this, to the team at Prosper, specifically James, Christina and Dominique, a very big thank you. The whole process was seamless and the professionalism displayed was nothing short of excellent. We needed to get some additional capital as a safeguard for an unexpected expansion. It's a good problem to have. And after hearing about Prosper on the Small Business Big Marketing Show, I made contact with them based on the reviews of the show show. I filled out the application forms in the morning and the funds cleared just after lunch the same day. Gotta love that. I've now found my new business finance partner. Great review, Luke. Uh, Prosper is ace. Uh, Short-term loans for small business. Head over to prosper.com forward slash Timbo or give them a ring. 1300 882 867 and tell them Timbo sent you. And we're also made possible thanks to Design Crowd, which is the world's number one custom design marketplace where, with access to 550,000 designers, you'll get the perfect design every time. And you can get 100 bucks off your brief if you visit designcrowd.com forward slash Timbo. Well, I say welcome to a small business marketing show where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Timbo Reed. And welcome back to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. You, infinitely more importantly, you're a motivated business owner and you are ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful, beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. Big show today, team. Vitality Air founder Troy Packett joins us from the great white north, that is Canada, to explain how he's built a nice little business selling cans of fresh air. (laughs) So many questions. Uh, Melbourne SEO Services' Dave Jennings explains why and how to optimise every page of your website for the user, not Google, I know, crazy. And I've got a couple of updates for you. As per usual, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Do you need a speaker for your next conference? Recommend Timbo to your event organiser, or better still, book him. Tim Reid, that's R-E-I-D dot com dot A-U. All righty, a couple of updates for you before we get stuck in to today's guest, which is an absolute ripper. Now, this year, I want to give away more stuff to you. I want to give you free things. So what I'm going to be doing is tapping guests on the shoulder and saying, what do you got to give my listeners, hey, for free? I think that'd be a bit of fun. Uh, Very kindly, Rex Quo, past guest Rex Quo, is the first one out of the blocks with this idea. He's the inventor of Orbit Keys, a great way to uh, arrange your keys. Uh, And it was a great interview with Rex, all about how he raised hundreds of thousands of dollars through crowdfunding. I'll put a link in that to that interview in the show notes. But he's giving away 10 limited edition black Orbit Keys. They're valued at 50 bucks each. Now, If you want to win stuff on the show going forward, head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and just complete the form on the homepage. Uh, All you need to do is give me your name and email address. Then you go onto my database. You can also head over to facebook.com forward slash smallbusinessbigmarketing and uh, you can follow what's going on that way. Um, In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to put those Orbit keys up for giveaway and uh, figure out how I'm going to give them away, by the way, and um, anything else that we've got to give away over the year. That's how you are going to find out. Speaking of giving, um, a big thank you 
to Richard from Little Brixton Barbecue Sauces. He sent me some wonderful barbecue sauces over Christmas or for Christmas, I must say. The rum and barbecue was pretty good. Tyson McKeo from Brewers Feast. .com.au, which is a Melbourne beer festival coming up February 3 and 4. Tyson's kindly sent me some tickets to go to that. He knows my love of craft beer. Thanks, Tyson. Hopefully I can make that, mate. Um, And finally, guys, an update on the bi-monthly mastermind idea I shared with you uh, a couple of episodes ago. Been good interest in it. Hey, I like that. It's going to be a bi-monthly catch-up in Melbourne and or Sydney, just depending on interest, where you and I and nine other motivated business owners uh, from non-competing categories, once your category's taken, it's taken, we get together for a morning where we share marketing ideas, bounce marketing ideas, I help you break through any blockages you might have, and we use the power of the mastermind to move our businesses forward. Uh, If you're interested, email me, tim at timreid.com. Dot au and um, I'll let you know once I decide to get it off the ground. I still need to email my list to get a sense of how interested they are. But it's looking pretty good. Initial uh, inquiry, excellent. Thank you for that. Now, on with the show. You and I are going to be meeting some amazing business owners and marketers over the coming weeks, including a chat with Renee Bunster from Bunster's Hot Sauces, who'll share with us how she got to be the number two hot sauce product on Amazon worldwide. No, no, not an easy feat, that one, but she's done it from her home kitchen. Righto, that brings us to today's guest, ex-deep sea diver, Troy Packett is the co-founder of Vitality Air, a business that sells fresh air in a can from the Canadian Rockies. Oh, my goodness. It raises so many questions, doesn't it? Like, (laughs) really? (laughs) But also, why? How? To who? Boy, oh, boy. I started off by asking Troy, why bottled air? Why not? <laughs> we we have everything else in life bottled, so we thought, you know what? We want to do something unique, something different, something that wasn't out there. Um, in Alberta and Canada, we uh, we get to enjoy the Rocky Mountains and some of the best air in the world. So we thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could find a way to capture this and send it around the world for people to uh, experience themselves? I, I buy that. That's a, that's a fair answer. Um, it's not easy today to find uh, a unique product. I mean, most things I think I think have been invented, but uh, bottled air certainly is, is a new one. I understand that Moses, your your business partner, he started it. He was a mortgage broker in a previous life, and for a joke, started selling bottled air. Well, actually, not bottled air, but bagged air on eBay. Yeah, that's kind of how we had started. We uh, we thought, well, we'll give it a go and we'll just start with putting a bag on eBay and see. Uh, the first bag sold for like 99 cents. Um, it wasn't a very good business venture because I think it cost us like nine bucks to ship. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> business 101, we kind of uh, didn't make her on that one. But the, the second bag sold... Uh, I don't have a number for me. I think it was about $168 US. Get out of here. And, uh, so that one we actually made money on and we shipped that one down into the States. So. Uh, why the difference? What did you do differently to get $168 versus $0.99? Cents? Uh, not not a lot different. We used a bigger bag. So <laughs> there's a little <laughs> bit more there quantity-wise. Yeah. But uh, it's it's eBay. Sometimes you, you get top dollar for stuff and sometimes you don't. That's online marketing. You never know who's who's going to be on their computer that day and find something interesting. At, at this point, were you just – you and Moses just mucking around or were you seriously testing the idea on eBay? Uh, a little bit of both. I think um, much like anything, it's kind of like, oh, wouldn't it be funny and – don't you think, wouldn't it be cool to get people experience? I wonder if this would work. And and it, it was a little bit of both, I guess one would say. Um, everything kind of starts as a crazy idea, right? Cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and from what I read, Moses was sort of over his career in mortgage broking. You're a commercial diver by trade, looking for a bit of an entrepreneurial bend? Pretty much, yeah. And I, uh, I also was in real estate as well. So that's how I know Moses too. Uh-huh. So... Uh, 
we know each other on the business side too. So again, both of us, you know, um, I always joke with my wife. I always say I never know what I want to be when I grow up. So I still haven't found it. <laughs> Mate, join the club. I'm just wondering when I'm going to grow up. There you go. <laughs> Tell me, um, I, I do want to get into the product and the marketing of air. I never thought I'd say that. But but just for my benefit and for those listening who are still in that cynical phase of, come on, these guys are joking around, I found a quote by a Greenpeace representative to say, and I, and I quote, unfortunately we need about 20 cubic metres or 20,000 one-litre bottles of air every day so bottled air is hardly a long-term solution. Um I'm not sure he's he's having a go at it. He's just putting some numbers around it. But I reckon there'd be a lot of people who just look you in the in the face and look you in the eyes and go, "You guys, you got to be kidding yourself. You're ripping people off." What do you say to them? Uh, we always say it's a lifestyle. It's uh, it's a treat. So it's something that you know you could treat yourself. So for instance, you can make coffee at home. But a lot of people love to go out and experience a higher level of coffee. Um, you can get bo- you can get water out of your tap and put it in a bottle. Yet people like to buy it um, on the go and try water from different places in the world. So it's it's more of not solving the world's pollution problems by any means. It's just something to treat yourself, something different that you can try and experience. So you say it's a lifestyle. Um product decision i guess is what you're saying there but from a lot of the collateral on your website you do talk about the fact that and i think you quote china a lot beijing in particular that has pollution and smog rates off the charts i mean i was in shanghai last year and mate there was one day when they actually suggested don't go outside um so is it a lifestyle solution this bottled air or or and or is it uh, a genuine health remedy? We have to be a little bit careful, obviously, with trying to make any kind of health claims. Um, so we're not going to say, you know, come on, breathe our air, it's going to cure anything. Um, on the other hand, cleaning, breathing clean air versus polluted air obviously has a positive effect. Um, but it's for like those days in Shanghai where you just can't get a break. You just can't get your, you know, your wind about you. And you could literally, instead of where some countries that go outside for a smoke, uh, for a cigarette, you could stop and have a can of fresh air and you just inhale it. And it's a more of a cool, deep breath. And it's not, it's not mm-hmm. thick. Like yeah, yeah. Some of us have experienced in Shanghai. It's, it's, it's hard to explain when you come from a country with great air and then you go somewhere like that. It's just, it's it's thick. Yeah, I don't no, I get it, man. Because it. like I, I live in Melbourne, where our water is beautiful. I mean, it's just, it's great water. Uh, yet I'm sure, like every other city, bottled water sales are very high. And I like, I don't get it. And I buy the odd bottle of bottled water, but uh, I don't really understand it. And I guess until you live in a country, in your case, where the air is is not good, you can sell uh, fresh air to them. Uh, it 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 kind of made it's starting to make sense in my mind. So tell me, you, you do you get your second sale on eBay? 168 US dollars. You and Moses have looked each other in the eye. Couple of high fives, I'm guessing. Um, what, what was the next step? Well, the next step is we realised that we needed to try and create more. So you need greater volume because at the end of the day, you open this bag, the air comes out, it kind of deflates. So we had to put our minds together and come up with something that we could capture the air in it. It would be smaller for shipping purposes while still having uh, more volume inside of it. So that's where we came up with the uh, the cans that we currently use. Okay. So you literally gone from the bag to we're going to we're put this into... into into aerosol cans. So explain the process. It's not really the manufacturing. Explain the bottling process. Uh, so what it is, we go to uh, Banff Park areas out to the Rocky Mountains. So we go right out there, the two of us. We spend anywhere from about 20 to 40 hours collecting the air, depending on uh, how big our orders are or whatnot. We go out there, we capture the air, uh, we bring it back, and then we hook it up and we fill all the bottles by hand. Uh, when it comes to filling, we have some people that come in and help us depending on order size. You, so. That all sounded very easy. Two questions. How do you capture the air when you're out in the Rockies? Well, that's uh, that's the trade secret. <laughs> it's it's the secret say, sauce. I put Moses in the back of the truck and I drive fast. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> back of the truck and drive fast. Big vacuum. Come on, give us a little bit more. You got to yeah. uh, okay. You're not going to tell us exactly how, but basically, 
you know, we, we collect it, we vacuum it up, we compress it, we put it into uh, bigger cylinders that we can bring back and then transfer across. So you've got these, it's condensed, it's in these big cylinders, and then back at the ranch, back at the factory Vitality Airs HQ, you then yep. hand, I don't know, I don't even know what the language is, dispense it into these aerosol cans, right? Correct. We transfer it from uh, the bigger cylinders into the aerosol cans, and then that way, too, it's straight across. It's not exposed to the air. It's not contaminated or anything like that, and we're not trying to produce cans out in the Rocky Mountains. We're in a a safe, clean, dry facility. Do you still see the humour in it, Troy? Absolutely. I mean, we get it (laughs) all the time, right? And uh, my family always teases me and says, well, you know, when it, when we have any kind of sales or anything, they're like, well, you should be able to sell anything. You sold air. So if you could sell air, you could sell anything, right? Totally, totally. So, okay, so you go out to these places. You don't just go out uh, to the Rockies near you. Like, are you there? Where, where else do you source your air from? Well, for us, it's about a three or four-hour trip into where we go. We have a couple different locations that we go into and then we collect the air there depending on the time of the year and whatnot. Um, In the winter, it's a little bit trickier because the mountains get Mm -hmm. a lot of snow. So our our spots are a little bit harder to choose from. But yeah, we always go out and collect it from Okay, so so you're actually, you're not going out into other parts of the world. Uh, It was more what I was getting at. Well, currently, so Vitality Air currently is out of Banff and Alberta, Edmonton. And then we have another sister company that we've created in South Korea, and that's called Jiri Air. So we're actually collecting air from a national park in South Korea in uh, the southern part of South Korea. So down there, we've partnered with uh, the local government and some other people down there, and we've created another line of air called Jiri Air. Well, why South Korea? Uh, because it's it's close to a distribution point into China or because the actual air in South Korea, which I can't imagine is, very good? Uh, in the park, that the national park where it is, the, the air isn't as bad. Um, it's definitely uh, some of the cleaner air in Asia. Um, but it, it was just the opportunity, the Korean people seeing the interest, the Korean people worry about their health. They, they like different products and yeah. they just, they wanted to be a part of this and, and to be able to share some of the Korean experience into, into China as well, because sometimes it's not always about the product. It's about the story behind it. Right. Uh, tell me more. So for instance, it, it may not just be, Oh, a can of air. But if, if you look into it, I mean, if you're looking around on our website and you see that, you know, there's these two guys and they go out into the mountains and we've got pictures on Instagram and Facebook and you see what they go through just to get this can of air. And there's a bit of an experience around it. And then you realize this air actually is transferred from one, one side of the world to the other where you get to actually um, sample it. And, and there are unique smells like... Um, the, the pine, the pine air that we have here is much different than what we're, we're pulling in Korea. There's a, there is a tiny bit of a different smell if you actually did a side by side taste test per se. Seriously. So, so that was my yep. next question because like I'm looking at your product range and it's pretty significant on the vitalityair.com website. I mean, you have got, we'll, we'll discuss that in a minute because it's not just, it's not just canned air from a local area that you're selling. You've got a whole lot of different things. But um, if I was to get one of your cans of Vitality Air, it comes with some kind of little face mask that you attach to the top and breathe it in. Am I genuinely going to smell pine needles and I don't know, what else? Is it going to be that different? There is a difference. There absolutely is a difference. (laughs) Um, I don't know about yourself in, in Australia. If you can actually tell the difference, say, from one side to the other or the the beach area, there is uh, – It's it, for us, it's, it's so amazing. Anybody who drives out to the mountains in this area and just surrounded by trees, they literally just sit there and go, you know, and just – take it in and totally I mean, an absolutely in in real life there's no doubt i live down uh near the beach and i know that beach smell that salty air it's, it's wonderful if i go up into the hills it's a completely different um vibe to the air i get that but for you to capture that mm-hmm. in a can i mean um i find that incredible that's just your secret sauce obviously so you, so you've got there this you. range i'm mm-hmm. i'm assuming that with the pure vitality air you add nothing to it Tell me if I'm wrong, but then yeah. you you have 
other things like um, Vitality Essentials in which there is, um, just clicking on that now, but you've got like sleep and energy and uh, what else have you got there? Um, There's sleep, energy, tantra, allergy, stress. So yep. you're adding an essential oil or something. Is that what you're doing? Correct. Nice. We're working, we're working with some different things. So at first, you know, like we said, it, it was a bit of a, a joke slash interest. Let's just see um, how it all. But then, you know, you have to go, okay, this is selling. So we need to create a business. You can't just carry, say, canned dairy. So then the next thing was to also carry oxygen, so recreational oxygen. So that's on our website too. And then from there, we've just been kind of brainstorming. What else is out there? What else could we we do? And um, that's where we came up with the essentials. And then the other thing that's very famous in, in the Canadian Rockies is our water. So being able to... Um, create a mist that uh, allows ah. you to spray, you know, Canadian rocky water on your face. And we have organic sulfur mix as well. So uh, experiencing the, the two to combine together. What do you think about, uh, I, I love a niche and boy, oh boy, is this a niche. But what do you think about over the course of time being dragged into these different areas like oxygen, like mists, maybe one day you'll do water. Do you think that's that's a smart business move or are you better off just being known worldwide for the best canned air going around? Uh, I think it is a, it's a balancing game. I think you have to be careful that you're not just that one person doing the one product because eventually something else is going to come along. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know... I'm trying to think what we could really compare it to. Um, Water. I don't know if, do you ever remember the the beta machine? Yep. I don't know if that might yeah, be. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the beta machine, they, they patented it and they secured it and it became that nobody else could do anything. They only did that one thing, that beta machine, that mm-hmm. department. And for them, they just pigeonholed themselves. So nobody else could get into the game. So um, I think it's important to give yourself some diversity too, but not stray too far away. We're, we're not interested in going and making rubber boots tomorrow. <laughs> Come on, I'll hold you to that. <laughs> okay. okay. Got- but... You know what? Maybe maybe if uh, the rubber boots come filled with Canadian air, then maybe we're talking. Hey, now you're talking. That could be the uh, the suspension system, pure Canadian air. You'll never walk better anywhere. Tell me, um, I'm talking to uh, Troy. Is Troy is it Paquette? Yes, correct. Troy Paquette. Yeah. I'm talking to Troy Paquette. He's one of the co-founders of Vitality Air, which is canned air that comes out of the beautiful Banff area in Canada. Troy, how do you go about pricing? Yeah. <laughs> well, we uh, we basically took our time, took our you know our product, decided what our time is, what time's worth, um, supplies, and basically came up with a price. And we have established what the price is. Um, one might argue it was just pulling it out of thin air, but we <laughs> boom, boom. we used our brains to come up with that price. Uh, you, you okay? So time and and equipment and all that. It looks to me. What what, what do you? What's the typical price? Just give us a sense of um, what a can costs. So currently, a can is thirty two dollars Canadian on your website. Okay, so I think you've kind of factored in. I'm going to say a luxury tax because you want it to be seen. You mentioned earlier the word lifestyle. You're sort of positioning it. I'm guessing as a premium purchase. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so. There is the argument, and again, you're in business and you've made a business decision, but the people who need this the most are the poorer people in the developing countries who are particularly affected by smog. They're not going to be able to purchase this. Correct. Um, like you said, it is a, it is a business decision. Um, it's something that we chose to do. Uh, I think in some ways you know, bringing awareness to it. It does bring awareness to people yes. around the world that if somebody can sell air. So part of me thinks, you know, sometimes that maybe bringing that awareness brings light and maybe in turn, who knows, maybe that makes people look closer about what their carbon emissions are, what yeah. it is they're doing. I don't know, right? I'm I'm one guy who has a business and, you know, I, I think that everything has a bit of a ripple effect. And sometimes people say, you know what, this is crazy. They're selling canned air. We need to we need to create a committee or, or something like that to look at this pollution and how we can narrow it down, right? 
Yeah, no, fair call. You can't do everything. A, a fair answer. Eight litres, $32. How many gulps of air does that get me? It gets you about 181 second breaths. 181 second breaths. Okay, okay. So that would probably yeah. last me about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Going into an interview, I sort of gulped down a few. few uh, what, what I love uh, too is you have, look at your website, you've got uh, eight litre Bamfair with diamonds, $9,500 um, with diamonds plus signed by 2 Chains, who is a um, – who, who, who is 2 Chains? Like an a, a American rapper or – Yeah, and he's got a uh, that t- a TV show as well that he looks has. for unique, expensive products. Expensibility, yeah, for $20,000. Yeah, yeah. what, what do the diamonds add to the experience, Troy? Well, sometimes diamonds – I don't know. You have to ask my <laughs> wife. <laughs> I love it. I don't it. even know how to that. Right. Diamonds just you, make everything better, they say. Have you sold an eight-litre can of air with diamonds for $9,500? Not yet. Ah. But I haven't finished talking to you. So well, Correct. Maybe, maybe there's a way we can sell this yet today. Man, I would love that to happen. I'd love this show to be responsible. Funnier things have happened to guests on this show, let me tell you. Um, yes. Talk to me about distribution. You have an online store, an e-commerce play, uh, which is where I'm guessing the majority of sales come from, but then you also have distribution points in a few countries around the world. Is that correct? Correct. So we have, uh, we've, we've started to change gears a little bit and work more with distributors, and that way then we have people in the local countries countries and cities and it's a lot easier than trying to deal with stuff here in Canada so that's kind of been our shift is to try and get uh, to work with distributors and different investors and stuff like that to uh, get our product out there. How do, you, how do you go about finding someone? I, I interviewed a fellow a few months ago who has a product called Power Planter. It's an e-commerce store. It's basically a drill bit that you attach to your drill, drills a little hole in the ground and makes it very easy to plant seeds and bulbs. And uh, in the first 10 months, when I was, by the time I'd spoken to him, he'd done $1.8 million in sales. Um, wow. He, yeah, it was an amazing story. He had a very, very focused uh, website and he was, he was keeping it that way in terms of an e-commerce play. Um, mm-hmm. ha- and he, what, the way he'd found Power Planter was that he'd approached the, man, the, the creator of it, the inventor of it out of the States uh, and bought the licence to sell it in Australia. Is that how you're finding distributors in other countries? Are they approaching you or are you reaching out? Uh, most of them are approaching us. So we've had a fairly good run here with different media and exposure on different platforms. So a lot of people are, are out there looking to to get into the next thing and possibly look at opening their own business and, you know, finding products to sell. And most of them are approaching us and saying, hey, you know, we think we would be a good candidate to, to sell your products and here is why. Yeah, Okay. Well, that's good. That's not people. I noticed there is, you've got some, well, it's not really competition, but you do, there's someone set up in Australia. I'm just trying to find what they're called, mm-hmm. but there is an Australian version of Canned Air these days. Have you been in contact with any of your competitors? Uh, we know there's there's competitors out there and it's kind of interesting because, you know, if this idea was completely off the wall and completely crazy, <laughs> no there wouldn't it. be the competitors <laughs> no. out there, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, they're out there. Um, we think we're the premier company. We're the first company, and we feel like we're leading the charge and the rest are trying to to keep up and follow suit. Um, it's good and bad. It can be frustrating because we find, you know, it's like we create the can and the mask, and next thing you know, Everybody used yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah. We've created a website, and I can read our website on other people's websites. Oh, wow. So it's frustrating that, that there's no creativity. They're complete cut and paste, right? They're, they they try and ride on our coattails, and I guess maybe that's that's what happens when you're the first. So you've got two choices there. You can either go after them or you can continue to tell your story and do your work better what what do you choose to do that's what we're doing we choose to plug ahead right so yep. we are the first ones to come out with you know the canned air and that's what people have done so we shifted gears and we started doing the oxygen and some of the people started doing oxygen and we're like yeah well that was that was eight months ago we're already on to the essentials right and yes. you know we're working on other products too so we're constantly trying to grow and keep building. And we've seen some of the people that think it's really easy and they've popped up and they're already, they're already gone, right? So 
Let's talk marketing. Most mm-hmm. of the discussion has been around marketing already, but um, no one, I'm guessing, is going to Google and keying in buy canned air from Banff or even buying canned air. I've just done it here and what's popping up is uh, air compressors, um, compressed air, duster cleaner, you know, uh, anything but the type of canned air that you are selling. So how are you getting customers? Uh, Social media. So we do a lot of social media. We've been very lucky with uh, uh, individuals like yourself reaching out, different media platforms, um, we've done news interviews all over. Our product's been featured on a, a talk show like The Doctors. Um, we did the Two Chain show. So we've been really lucky with that, along with just, you know, some of the different Facebook marketing and, and word of mouth. And it just being such a unique product, people are willing to share it and talk about it. When you say social media, tell me more. So you, you post photos of you and Moses going up into the mountains and doing your thing. That's interesting. Behind the scenes always works. What what Are you running Facebook advertising campaigns or are you using other – what are no, you doing? We don't really do much of the campaigns. There's a little bit here and there, but not not – anything dramatic and i mean we get tons of those calls you know the the google adwords people and the different social media people saying you know you got to spend here but i think the product's so unique like you said who googles fresh breathing (laughs) canned air right no one like i don't even know how to buy that google adwords Right. So it's really just um, an organic approach to social media. And I, I would have to say, and that obviously I found you by watching that Two, two Chains show on Vice. Um, that's how I found you guys. That That's a strategy that's going to wear thin. And I imagine relatively shortly, you know, back then, Canned Air, it was new and it was novel and people wanted to know more about it. Now that you've got competitors coming on the market, uh, that idea of uh, news, podcasters, news stations, whatever it is reaching out may dry up. What next? Yeah, we're aware of it and, you know, we're blessed and we kind of count our blessings with that, you know, that we're still getting the attention in the media and we're trying to ride on it. And, you know, from there, I think it's just word of mouth. So people look and then from there with the local distributors putting it out on the platforms and and putting it out on different online sites, um, customers are looking for unique gifts. Customers are out there looking for alternatives and they're able to find it on a lot of different platforms throughout the world whether it be you know uh, Taobao or Baidu or uh, mm-hmm. some of the different other ones out there so love it what do you love about the business Troy uh, it's ever-changing um, it's it's creating new things and creating new equipment so when we first started there wasn't exactly something you go out and buy to <laughs> to, to create <laughs> Can dare so for me it's been a lot of just building unique equipment and building different things and I'm very much a hands-on guy so I love to be out there in the, in the wilderness and I love to be in the shop building stuff and inventing stuff and you know we bring products home for our wives all the time and we say give it a try and they look at us like we're nuts and, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and our kids my kids always have a blast they're like dad can I try this one what's this one so <laughs> Love we it. always we always involve a family. Yeah, it sounds like fun doing it. It sounds well. like you found something that you truly love. Um, a, a thought just came to me just in finishing up. Going back to pricing, I um, I subscribe to Dollar Shave Club. That's where I get my blades for shaving. Um, it's a re- it's a recurring revenue model. It works. You know, my blades mm-hmm. arrive each month, and I don't have to think about it. Um, I would have thought, uh, given 180 gulps of air in one can, probably isn't going to last that long. Is there a reason you're not doing a recurring subscription model? Uh, at at this point, we just honestly haven't set it up. We just haven't done it. Come um, on, Troy, step it up. <laughs> I know there's talk. We we talk about all this stuff, and unfortunately, Moses and I sometimes we talk and we get going, and we're all over here, and we have all these ideas, and we just need to narrow it down to the monthly subscription and stuff like that. We do have clients that um, that are somewhat on a subscription, but we don't really advertise it. So we have clients that just you know what, every three weeks they their order's there or we follow up with them, but we don't actually advertise like a monthly a monthly club per se. I would have thought, and give me a buzz when you do implement it, I would have thought it would be a business game changer 
because of just the nature of the product and the way people use it. But uh, I would have thought it'd be a priority. But hey, what would I know? I've never sold a can of air in my life. Who has? <laughs> you. Well, we're still we're still learning. So come on, man. Gotta, I love it. Hey, uh, Troy. You thank you. Up with us. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. And and if we make a sale of that $9,500 eight-litre bottle of canned air with a diamond as a result of this show, uh, I look forward to receiving a free can myself with a diamond. Ab- absolutely. <laughs> oh, well, hold on, hold yeah, on. I, I started to speak too soon before you slipped in with the diamond. In there. I love it, buddy. Vitalityair.com is where you will find this product. Uh, do, you, do you deliver to Australia? You probably don't. Uh, no, we typically can't get it over to Australia. Australia. There you go. Um, We've got good air over here. We don't need it. You do, but hey, what's wrong with experience in Canada? Th- that that is true. That's why you don't have to fly to the other side. That, really. that so is very true. We can ship some of our uh, all-natural products straight to your doorstep. Good on you, Troy. Thanks for sharing, buddy. All right. Thank you very much. Well, there you go, team. Troy Packett, Vitality Air. You going to get some? Doesn't ship here, but I'm sure there. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure there are other uh, competitors in the marketplace. But if you're listening to this in Australia, I think you're okay. Coming up, I share my top three attention grabbers from that fireside chat with Troy. Plus, Melbourne SEO Services Dave Jennings and I are going to show you how to optimize every page of your website for humans, not for Google. I know, crazy, crazy idea. Cheap. Quick, great. I used to work with a designer who'd forced me to choose two of those three options whenever I wanted something designed. As a small business owner with limited funds, it drove me nuts that I could never have all three. That's why I love Design Crowd. You see, Design Crowd is a website that helps startups, small businesses, and marketers outsource custom design from logos and business cards to websites and landing pages. In fact, Design Crowd gives you access to over 550,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco, ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. Here's how it works. You post a brief describing your design need. Within hours, you'll receive your first design, and over the next three to 10 days, a typical project will receive 60 to 100 different designs from designers around the world. You then pick your favorite, make any changes, and pay the designer. You know, whether you're an entrepreneur looking to set up your brand or an established business that needs marketing collateral designed, Design Crowd is your answer. For a special $100 VIP listener offer, go to designcrowd.com forward slash Timbo or enter the discount code Timbo when posting a project. See, now you can have cheap, quick, and great design thanks to Design Crowd. Cash flow in business is everything, right? That's why I'm excited to introduce you to Prosper, Australia's number one online lender to Aussie small businesses. But don't take my word for it. Small business owner Nioli Scoby of Truly Tea won the contract to supply the opera house and needed to quickly ship tens of thousands of tea bags and two tonnes of loose leaf tea. Where was she going to get the money for that? Okay, well, I already supplied, you know, part of the opera house and then they offered me, um, you know, inside the opera house, which is a very big deal, and I had to have a lot of stock on hand. You can't say no to the opera house when they they place an order, they want it the next day, and those are the terms of trade, and I wasn't going to say no to them. I'd knocked back too many opportunities in the past, so I phoned up a a finance guy I trusted, he said, look, there's a new player on the market, Prosper, give them a call. I gave them a call and within 24 hours I had the money in the bank. (laughs) Prosper, P-R-O-S-P-A. That's where she got the money. Apply online in 10 minutes to borrow up to $250,000. Call 1-300-882-867 or visit prosper.com forward slash Timbo. Right, I'm a top three attention grabbers from a chat with Vitality Air's Troy Packett, thanks to Prosper and Design Crowd. Attention grabber number one. People will buy anything. (laughs) 
became quite obvious to me as I was talking to Troy. So if you're sitting on a product or service idea that you think is like wacko jacko, then maybe it's time to bite the bullet and just take it to market. One person's crazy idea is another one's genius. I don't think that's a quote. I just made that up. But it's like, you know, one man's junk's another man's treasure, that kind of thing. Who knows? Take it to market. You might surprise yourself. Attention grabber number two, use eBay to test a new product idea. I love this. And if you have an idea for a new service, then maybe try Gumtree in Australia or or Craigslist in the States. And attention grabber number three, I like how Vitality Air is expanding into other related products, oxygen, scented mists, all that type of stuff. Still sort of within that kind of weird niche of fresh air, sort of. You know, they're not going too far uh, abroad, but uh, I like the idea of kind of um, expanding the product range. How can you expand your service or product offering? That's what grabbed my attention. Love to know what grabbed yours. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 400 and let me know. Now, hang around after the end of this episode because I'm going to play you a quick voicemail I received from a past guest who's got a whole lot of work as a result of being on this show. You've heard me talk before about why podcast interviews are a great way to get business. If you've never done an interview on a podcast, find one, get it, lock it in. But first, let's see what this rather large and furry bright red button does. You know, with so many underperforming websites out there, this segment is laser-focused on ensuring yours is not one of them. To get your website found and your phone ringing, we're joined by Dave Jennings of MelbourneSEOServices.com. DJ, what is on your mind this week? It is a really common problem that someone will listen to a podcast or read a blog post. That is not a problem. (laughs) There's there's, there's, (laughs) There's more coming. There's more coming. Hold, hold. And what they do is they hear this idea of SEO and then they think, what I've got to do, I've got to find the keywords that people are searching. And then they try and stuff that keyword into their website Uh wherever they can. Right. Google are a bit smarter than that, I would have thought. Yes, they are, but people apparently are not. Right. <laughs> What's it called? Keyword stuffing? That's exactly what right. it's called. And it's the wrong thing to do. So what would you do? The right thing to do is realise that rather than optimising for Google first, you optimise for your user first. Genius. Because when you think about it, they're the person who's going to be buying your products and services anyway. Well, and Google are really set up for the, for the consumer, right? That's, that's exactly that's what they're here to do. Correct. So I think I've seen dramatic improvements in ranking and traffic by simply identifying great keywords and then optimising following Google's best practice, Mm -hmm. which they outline. So if you need a hand with that, if you want to get an expert or someone... Well, it is a little bit geeky, so I'm (laughs) thinking people listening are going, give me a bit of hand with that. Yeah, and I'm happy to help. All they got to do is email Dave at melbourneseoservices.com. I'd be happy to take a quick look. It'll be free, and I'll try and point you in the right direction, see if I can help, or at least get you started. No such thing as a free lunch. What are you going to do, hey? <laughs> if I can Come help on. them, I will. Good idea, buddy. You're good like that. Well, there you go, team. That is just one more way to ignite your sight. All right. You and I cover some serious marketing ground in this show, don't we? We've previously caught up with Max Lenman, who created an amazing video to sell his girlfriend's beat-up old Honda on eBay. We've chatted with Four Pillars Gin founder Stu Greger, who showed us how to build a premium brand. And what about that chat we had with SEO genius Rand Fishkin, who stepped us through creating the ultimate show notes for a podcast? Some good stuff there. I'll put links in the show notes to the in the show notes uh, of this episode to those interviews. Plus, you'll find those episodes and hundreds more over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com or you can subscribe free on your favourite podcast app, which means that you will never, ever miss an episode. Got to love that. You'll even find me on Spotify and all Virgin Australia flights. Hey, I'd love to hear from you. 
hit the contact button over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com where you can email me, connect with me on social media and grab a signed copy of my book, The Boomerang Effect, which I think you'll love. And a big thank you to Prosper, Australia's number one online lender to small business. You can quickly apply online for loans up to $250,000, get a fast decision, and in most cases, receive the funding in under 24 hours like old Lukey did. Uh, that testimonial I read at the top of the show. Call one 882867 Tell them Timbo sent you. And check out Design Crowd, the world's number one custom design marketplace where with access to 550,000 designers, such a big number, you'll get the perfect design every time and you can get 100 bucks off your brief if you use the link designcrowd.com forward slash Timbo. If you love the Small Business Big Marketing Show and this is episode 400 after all, no hoo-ha, but there are... 399 other episodes, and I'm hoping you're loving them, then let another business owner know by grabbing their phone, opening up the podcast app, searching Small Business Big Marketing, hit subscribe, hand it back to them, say you're welcome, move on to the next small business owner. They'll love you forever. Until next week, I'm Timbo Reed. always have been, always will be. Thanks for tuning in. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now. Tim Reed, superstar. It's Clive McCorkle from Arrow Zone. Um, mate, I hope you're well. Just uh, wanted to give you an update. Um, still getting um, people inquiring and uh, wanting to know a little bit about us from the podcast. So um, definitely works. There's a, you have a couple of people listening to your content by the sounds of it. Um, but um, yeah, we've actually managed to even pick up a job. So I um, wanted to uh, thank you and um, yeah, touch base with you. Um, give me a call when you've got five minutes. Thanks, mate.